Hey gang, how's it going? Me again. Isn't this awesome? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I am so psyched about doing physics. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about, this video actually is going to talk about deorbiting. So, uh, if you have not gone and watched the orbital velocity video, please go and watch the orbital velocity video because you need that information. I'm going to assume you know this, the content from that video. Um, the reason I'm spinning this is because this is my explanation of orbit that uh, as something is orbiting something else, as the, duct, as the roll of duct tape is orbiting my hand, I guess, really, then um, what is keeping it up, right? There, it should fall like that, it should fall, right? But there is a motion, there's a force because of the circular motion that it has that's keeping it up in the air. You guys, have you guys experienced this? Have you ever washed a car with a bucket of water? Done that, you know, it stays, the, bucket, the water stays in the bucket. If you've ever been on a, on a uh, roller coaster ride, gone upside down, same kind, same kind of stuff there. Actually feel the force of pinning yourself against the seat when you're upside down on a roller coaster. It's kind of cool. So, uh, so you're in orbit, you're on the spacecraft. How do you deorbit? How do you get down to the surface? That's what you want to do, right? Um, so, we'll go back to our, our awesome drawing. Um, this is our planet being orbited. Big M, that's my big M. I'm gonna draw a little bit more space. This is our orbit. Imagine it's a circle, and it was not really a circle. Just pretend it's a circle. And this is our little M, this is our thing orbiting, little M. Now, uh, I didn't talk about it in the other video, but when something's moving in a, in a circular motion, the velocity vector goes straight out, tangential to the circle. To the circle. So when it's here, it's doing this. When it's here, it's doing this. When it's here, it's doing this. So it's velocity is always tangent to the circle, like this straight line. So it's here, and then it just remains tangent to the circle, like this straight line. So uh, it's important. We'll need that in one second. And so as you as you recall from our orbital velocity video, we've got the radius of the planet, then we've got the altitude, right? But what we're interested in actually is the radius. Uh, this is R that we're interested in. That's the radius is being that is being made. It's the, the radius of the circle that the orbiting thing is making. Okay, that is what R is. Um, and so that leaves us with this equation. Remember, there's a force of gravity, force of gravity pulling the mass downward. There's a force from circular motion keeping the mass, you know, pushing the mass up and away. And they are in, uh, they are opposing, and they are equal because it's not moving. So force from the circular motion is equal to force of gravity, and m v, like that little v, sorry, m v squared over r. That's the value for the circular motion force. Equals. My bad. Equals big G. Big G, big M, little m, over r squared. And then we solve the velocity is just, the velocity of this thing is just big G, big M, over r. Because your masses cancel, and you lose one, you lose one r on the right, the right side. So that's your velocity. I'm leaving this up here because this tug of war is what we're gonna be playing with for, to deorbit. There's a tug of war going here, Think of, my, think of my duct tape being, you know, there's a tug of war. Like I stop it at the very top. There's a tug of war, whoa, that's gravity right there for you. Gravity is trying to pull it down like that, but the circular motion force is pushing it up. So there's a tug of war going on, right? And my, the, the rope I have is preventing the duct tape from just flying off and going, whoo, you know? So uh, that's a good example of tangential velocity. So, <laughs> so, uh, so. If you were standing on the planet and you were watching this thing orbit overhead, what would it look like to you? That's right. It looks like it's going straight overhead. So, this is my surface of my planet. Um, and then here's my little m, my velocity of my spacecraft, right? So this is the, the V spacecraft. And I'm going to represent it as a velocity as a vector. I don't know if you've studied vectors yet, but vectors 
are very important in physics and in math. So our spacecraft is moving. Basically, I'm going to define a coordinate system here. Um, we'll say that like this is positive x, and this is up is positive y. I think that's what you, most of y'all are familiar with. That's our coordinate system. So this so the, all the velocity is basically in the positive x direction. Like we show here, it's all tangential. It's all tangential to the surface. It just takes off and goes, whoo, takes off tangentially to the surface. Okay, so, um, and remember, at this altitude, so here's big M down here, right? Big M. And then here's the center of our mass, and we're going to draw. So there's our R. There's our R. And here's our altitude, just ALT. So there's our our radius, so I'm just trying to draw everything for you. Here's our dashed line. Um, that's our altitude. So if we decrease altitude, we decrease R. You all know this. Um, so at this altitude, at this, for this value of R, the velocity of this spacecraft is such that it's in a stable orbit. So it just stays at that orbit, it just stays at that altitude. And it's stable right there because of the velocity and because of the altitude and because of all these things, because of the mass of the planet and stuff like that. So um, it's stable there. So how do we destabilize it? That's, that, that's how you deorbit, is you have this relationship right here is uh, the circular motion force equals the force due to gravity. It's in, it's in a stable relationship. And uh, they equal, and then it's, everything's stable, they're good to go. And it'll stay there for a long time. I mean, if there's no atmosphere, if there's no drag or outside forces, it could stay there forever. I mean, look at Earth, and, you know, it's, we hope it stays in orbit around the sun, pretty much where it is for a long time, right? And the moon. The moon is orbiting around Earth, basically. Um, and uh, so we hope that it stays pretty much where it is, too. So this relationship is stays there for a long time, at least as long as we can tell. I mean, there's outside forces sometimes that occur that, that uh, impact the relationship, but that's what we, but, well, but what we want to do to deorbit is we want to destabilize this, this stable relationship. We want to cause some turmoil so they have to go see a counselor or something, right? We want to cause, you know, destabilize this stable relationship. So, uh, there's not many things we can play with, are there? We can't play with the mass of the little thing because it falls out of the equation anyway, right? It, it's not even in here, right? It, it cancels out. We can't, uh, big G is a constant. The mass, the big M mass, uh, we can't play with that because it's the mass of the planet that we're orbiting. So we can't mess with that mass. Um, oh, but by the way, this is in your book. Follow along, deorbit uh, and impact uh, is what this section is called. We'll talk about some impacting as well, how you, the angle that you impact at. So, uh, um, so how do you, uh, how do you destabilize this? So basically we have two things to mess with. We, get, we have two knobs we can turn. We have velocity and we have radius, okay? Or altitude, if you want to think about that, you know, think about it as altitude, but basically it's radius. So we can play with the altitude that the space, that, the, uh, that your probe is at, or we can play with the velocity your probe is at. So if, you're, if the spacecraft's flying along, you're flying along, you know, it's, it's in orbit, flying along, and then just lets go of your, it just it won't fall, but it lets go of your payload, what would happen? Your payload's going the same velocity, and it's just going to sit there. It's going to sit right next to the spacecraft. It's going to be awkward for everybody because your spacecraft is like, you're supposed to leave. I, I, I let you go, and you're still here, and it's awkward. And um, so don't, let, don't be that guy. Don't be the, the payload that hangs out next to the spacecraft when the spacecraft tried to let you go. You know, spacecraft is like, I think we should see other you know, payloads and other probes and other spacecraft but you just keep hanging out and you're in this stable orbit right next to me. I want you to go away. So you have to be forced away, which is muzzle velocity, which is the muzzle velocity video. You have to be forced out of the spacecraft in order for you to deorbit properly. But how are you forced out? Which direction? How do you deorbit? So the things you can mess with are altitude and velocity. How do you change? Uh, so what, okay, so what happens if, let's say we decrease so if we maintain the same altitude, so R does not change, what happens if we decrease our velocity, okay? A small decrease in velocity means that this force, the force uh, C, force due to the, the force due to circular motion, motion goes down by a lot because it's a velocity squared. So a small, small reduction in velocity 
reduces this C, this force by a lot. Does gravity care about velocity? No, it does not. There's no velocity term over here at all. So, so gravity stays the same. This force lowers. So gravity is, I have, gravity pulls you down. Ha ha ha. He has an evil laugh and everything, and it pulls him down. So one way to deorbit is to slow down at a certain altitude. If you're at your given altitude, just slow down and you will deorbit. This is what we do for space shuttle. This is what we do. Um, this is how the space shuttle you know, used to deorbit. It doesn't fly anymore, but it used to deorbit by just slowing down. It was at a certain altitude. It would put on its, its brakes. It would just fire thrusters in the opposite direction. And it would slow down and start to deorbit. That's how it works. Very, very simple. So how do you slow down if you don't have brakes like the space shuttle and you're flying in the positive X direction? Well, the spacecraft, the spacecraft can deploy you in the negative X direction. So the spacecraft's going, spacecraft's going like this. It's going whoosh, flying this way. So what's, it's, it's going to go like this. It's going to deploy you like that. And you're going to be going, you won't be going backwards, but you'll be going in the positive X direction, but just a little bit slower. It's like if you're driving down the street at 100 miles an hour going that way, and you throw a baseball at 10 miles an hour that way. The baseball's still going that way, but at 90 miles an hour, right? So vectors add tip to tail. So the way you slow down at, a, at, a, at the same altitude is just have the spacecraft kick you backwards. Not kick you, but push you out backwards, okay? So the resultant vector is here. So now you're traveling that fast. So this is your probe velocity, velocity of your probe now. This is the velocity of the um, barrel, from the barrel. So velocity of the probe now is here. And what will happen is um, gravity will start to pull you down. So you'll start to feel, uh, you'll start to fall. And your y velocity will increase as you're falling. And you're going to end up with at an angle here. So. That's what you do. Once you once your y velocity starts to once you become destabilized, you um, start to fall just like you would uh, on Earth, and you can approximate it that way if you like. If you want to approximate it using mg, you can do that, or you can use the big equation for gravity. What is the gravity at a certain altitude? But then you have to change your gravity as you get closer and closer. Okay, so. Uh, you can do that. So that's how you deorbit. You basically have the spacecraft kick you backwards. That's one. Uh, that's one way to deorbit. Okay. And this is on. This is in the sheet. Okay. Deploy backwards is one way to deorbit. Um, what's another way to deorbit? So I said we had two things to play with. We had velocity. We had altitude. Right. So if you're going, what happens if you maintain this velocity? The, this velocity stays the same. But all of a sudden, you decrease your uh, altitude. You decrease your radius. So this, this value drops, and this value drops. This value drops by a lot, though, because it's r squared, right? So this value drops. So this whole term over here increases. This force increases by a little bit. This value drops, but this whole term increases by a lot because it's r squared. So it, 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 the gravity increases by the square of this one. So by a small decrease in altitude will, ha will allow gravity to take you over, if you go in the same, even if you're going the same velocity. So what does that mean? So that means the spacecraft will basically kick you, well that's a terrible line, the spacecraft will just push you down. You know, at, at a certain altitude, at a certain velocity, the spacecraft is just gonna, you're, you're flying along and the spacecraft just goes, oh, pushes you down, get out of here, oh. So um, that's what it does you down and then so your resultant your initial resultant velocity is there and then you'll start to fall you'll start to increase your velocity in the y direction as you start falling and then it's just like projectile motion at that point and we'll talk about projectile motion in another video so uh, that's basically it um, and I talk about projectile motion at the, at the, at the bottom um, now what will happen is is you're gonna um, so you'll have a VY and then this will be, you know, this will be, and you'll have a, here's your VX, and this is your V. And so you'll end up hitting the ground with a VY, and your VX does not change at all the entire time, and then you'll have your, your overall V, okay? That's how you solve for the, the vectors, the, and you can find your angle of impact here when you hit the ground based on, basically just based on how much your, your, y, your, your y velocity increases as you fall. Um, 
And we'll, we'll talk about that in the uh, projectile motion video. This is just a preview of that. But um, so that's how you deorbit. That's how you deorbit. You just kick yourself uh, backwards or kick yourself downwards. And uh, basically, you have this equation here, this force, this, uh, this balance of forces, and you want to unbalance it. You want to unbalance it such that gravity starts to take over. So um, either decrease this one or increase both, but increase gravity by more. That's how you do it. Uh, again, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, email me or PJ or your UAH uh, point of contact or uh, project manager, and we'll try to help you. But that's how you deorbit. Um, so uh, the angle of impact, we're going to talk about angle of impact in the projectile motion video. But uh, um, basically, it's as you start to fall, uh, we'll talk about that later. As you fall, you're going to hit the ground. Just remember, your x velocity does not change at all. Your x direction velocity does not change, but your y direction velocity will change. So uh, that's all for now, and we'll see you in another video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.